So ladies and gentlemen, we are beginning with our first panel discussion now, and um, which will be talking about business growth with digital media, strategies for growing businesses, returns through digital and lessons from the success stories of the digital only businesses. And for initiating this panel, may I please invite Mr. Prasad Pimple, Executive Vice President and Head for Digital Business Unit Kotak Live to join us on the screens. And also Mr. Tandeep Walunj for uh, CMO Nippon Life India AMC, Mr. Somesh Surana, Head Digital Business Group HDFC Ergo, Mr. Vishal Parekh, Director Monetization, Monetization, sorry, Monetization Yahoo and a Session Chair, Mr. Rupam Garg, CEO Densu X India to join us on the, their screens. And uh, I would request Mr. Rupam Garg, who is also our Session Chair to kind of initiate the talk and uh, let's diverge into this interesting session. Great, Shobhna, thank you. Uh, so welcome everybody, uh, Sandeep, Prasad, Vishal, Tomej. Uh, hey, and, Rupa, uh, hi. Hi. So we uh, we are the first panel, and we I'm going to start with some provocative question. Maybe Sandeep, uh, if you could answer that question first itself. Uh, it's saying, can digital only business be successful for growth in today's times? Actually, uh, you want me to begin? Yeah, uh, Sandeep, okay. if you could. Uh, take All the right. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Good afternoon, everybody, and you know, thank you for for having us here. Um, I think. Uh, the question has already been answered, uh, you know, by the great change agent there is, which is time, uh, you know, and time has hastened, uh, you know, process which was on for a fairly long time. Uh, but all of us on the digital side of things always uh, were looking at, uh, you know, path to acceptance or, or a road to acceptance and something. And, you know, COVID pandemic has, uh, you know, essentially shortened that road, right? So the question is not really whether uh, you know it is possible to have a digital only strategy um, but the question is uh, you know how can you uh, very quickly get a digital business strategy if you don't have one uh, and more importantly for the traditional legacy businesses how could we compete effectively uh, with the digital only businesses right especially in the fsi where most of us operate in those are really the questions uh, right so what has really happened is uh, uh, you know the the whole paradigm shift that the pandemic did, um, the acceptance, you know, has been hasted of the digital only model. Uh, and there are multiple factors that have led to it, you know, the first and foremost being the benefit, um, you know, people started getting deals, people started getting uh, home delivery, you know, of every conceivable thing, um, you know, it was just so convenient, uh, you know, and then it was always beneficial because, you know, digital typically is associated with deals and offers, um, you know, and cashbacks and stuff. So people shifted fairly quickly, um, you know, so that was the first one, which is benefit. The second one is the optimization, right? We could optimize on travel, uh, like people like you and me, Rupam and, you know, my co-panelists, -co these days we are doing five or six or seven meetings in a day, uh, which was not possible in the physical era, uh, you know, so, so much of optimization have happened. Um, we also have realized that a lot of small talk, you know, has gone away. A lot of the time gets, you know, very gainfully employed to actually physical work. So similarly, you know, consumers have also uh, optimized their life, uh, you know, so they know what to order, how much to order, when to order. They know when the delivery is going to come. Most of the deliveries can be tracked on the phone and so on and so forth, right? So that's another factor that has led to a very widespread acceptance of the digital only uh, model. In fact, many people prefer that. The third factor, uh, you know, as I said, is convenience, uh, you know, so uh, the travel time to malls, uh, you know, the, the whole pollution and, and the parking charges and so on and so forth. More importantly, you could try out things a lot better, uh, you know, just over the weekend, my daughter was selecting some spectacle frames on lens cart. And it was such a uh, inconvenient thing. I mean, she could try out like a 500 different pairs in, in like, you know, whatever, half an hour. Uh, and it was so, I mean, she could turn her face and, you know, the frame would turn and so on and so forth. So, so all of those things are so convenient, uh, you know, that obviously now people will think twice or thrice before going to a physical store, you know, go all the way. And then, you know, the model that you want is not there and so on and so forth. So that that's the part. The last part. Um, is the, the 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 whole optimization of life that we have achieved, right? So all of us have become far more efficient, um, and therefore the digitization, um, you know, is here to stay, uh, and therefore digital only business models uh, are also here to stay. 
Having said that, you know, there are a couple of big challenges that, uh, you know, digital only businesses will have to, you know, kind of encounter. You know, first one is because we are a social animal and digital only models typically tend to have um, very little or no touch and feel, um, you know, that, uh, you know, could have very serious impact on loyalty because essentially digital typically means deals and, you know, the, the transaction uh, is very functional. Um, and, you know, somewhere, some of those, um, you know, psychological aspects, you know, could, will have to be handled. But, you know, digital is here to stay and that's really the future. Thank you. Thank you, Sandeep. I think it's a great insight and it's actually somewhere linking to what Amanda was talking about of saying that how Amazon is going to operate and things are going to move ahead. So, Mish, any thoughts from your side on this? Yes. Uh, thanks, Rupam. Uh, first of all, thank you for inviting for uh, such a a uh, good conference where I can put my uh, thoughts together. I think a very relevant question, uh, not very simple to answer, but a very relevant question in today's time is digital only uh, or will digital only strategies or businesses will uh, is good enough or not? Uh, while the answer is a tricky one, but I will try and answer that. Uh, uh, my view is that uh, like Sandeep was also saying, uh, Yes, digital only business will obviously grow uh, and it will grow uh, much faster than any other traditional organization. But at the same point in time, we need to understand that we have, uh, it depends on the kind of business that we are talking about. It depends on the kind of products that we are talking about. And uh, then we need to see whether it is only digital or it is a mix of digital or not. Having said that, everyone will have to kind of solve the problems which exist. The pain points the customer needs to be resolved digitally. I mean, uh, for instance, if we talk about a business which we are in or the uh, financial sector, obviously both traditional and digital businesses will survive, but we'll have to find solutions which are more digital based, which are based on the digital platform. At same point in time, there are certain businesses, if I talk about Amazons of the world, uh, Amazon Prime, OTT, they can only be a digital only business and there they obviously have much uh, more to do. Uh, I think the larger point that we need to understand is that we need to know the customer pain points. We need to understand that customers are changing with time and we need to match up with their expectations. And uh, hence, uh, yes, digital is there to survive, but both both will have to work hand in hand. Thank you so much. So, this is a large question. I've tried to, uh, uh, and I think the, both of you, Sandeep and uh, Sumesh, have tried to capture it quite well. We just move on to the next question because uh, the length of the questions which are there and uh, the depth of the topic that we have to cover. Uh, so, my next question is to Prasad. Uh, Prasad, uh, if you could. Talk to us about the success stories of only digital business and lessons which are uh, which you think come from these success stories. Yeah. So uh, see, there are so many businesses which have gone successful with their digital only strategy. Uh, that's what we have seen uh, across the industries. But I take one example here uh, uh, of our discount brokers. So uh, we all know that currently the discount brokers like Zero the Upstocks or Grow. They are significantly growing their customer base. In fact, uh, whatever data I have uh, read in the uh, 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 market, around 75% of the new demand accounts that are getting opened uh, every year are through discount brokers. Now, discount broker, now that business was earlier available traditionally, a lot many companies were doing it, but the entry of discount, discount brokers has completely changed the uh, paradigm. It is a true success story. They have not only acquired good number of customers, like I mentioned, 70 percent of the industry sourcing is happening through discount brokers. At the same time, they are profitable. Like I was reading again in uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, reports that Zeroda has done something like 1,000 crores of uh, profit last year, last financial year. So if they can generate that kind of profit with a significant uh, increase in customer acquisition, I think there's a merit in looking at uh, these success stories uh, in detail. Now, according to me, uh, what has contributed to their success? I think they have solved one problem at a time for uh, all these uh, uh, customers. 
for example when earlier a uh, lot of people were not opening the demat accounts there was a fear that will i be able to do everything on my own will i because in online business everything is do it yourself the customers has to get that kind of confidence that this platform this tool the way they have simplified the things the way they have eased out on the processes the way they have put in their technology in place that confidence has to go into the consumer's mind that yes i can do it on my own i think this is the number one thing what they have uh, solved for number two i would uh, say uh, what they have looked at is yes their product was good they have reduced the brokerage they have made it zero at some of the cases that is anyway there but another important thing they did that they provided lot of flexibility to customers because what was happening earlier that <clears throat> with the sips with the lump sum uh, uh, investments in mutual funds in stocks what is happening lot of customers were having a long term commitment into it if i am starting the sip <clears throat> the traditional brokerages were asking for 12 months sip 6 months sip 3 months sip they simply said pay when you have money and when you want to pay so they simply made that proposition flexible second thing they did they made everything affordable we all know that uh, the mutual fund industry was giving and sandeep can correct me if i'm wrong that was having a 500 rupees uh, uh, sip uh, starting amount right from long time and people were investing into it but lot of these discount brokers made it uh, more affordable i have seen some of the platforms where now they offer a sip which is 100 rupees a month they have gone to that level they have made it really really uh, uh, affordable to the customer so they have given lot of ease to the customers simplicity to them lot of control by having uh, diy tools made it affordable <coughs> uh, put in lot of flexibility <coughs> and they have allowed people to do lot of experimentation lot of experimentation that people have I, i have not seen uh, 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 people are doing lot of intraday uh, trading they are doing swing trading i really don't know whether lot of them uh, have the knowledge to do those things but because they have made it so simplified uh, that has resulted into the success with so many transactions happening on the uh, discount uh, the uh, brokers uh, platform so the this is how the success story i would talk about and the key uh, you mentioned about the lessons from such a uh, uh, success story i think the biggest lesson from such a uh, success story is simplify it uh, simplify it to a level because if you want to succeed in a digital business you want to create a digital only business with the help of technology help with the help of processes with the help of your product simplify it to the level which will give confidence to the customers to do everything on their own do it yourself that's how i look at it thank you sir very insightful uh, vishal if i may uh, ask you the same question it's about success stories of digital only business and what lessons uh, are there from such success stories sure rupam thanks thanks for that question i think uh, prasad has actually covered a lot of thing but but let's divide this into two parts just to um, you know give everyone a clear idea of building a successful online business or a digital business versus building a online successful digital brand right so i think both of that is possible as uh, i think sandeep and uh, <clears throat> sandeep really mentioned about it depends upon which category right and even uh, somesh spoke about that that it depends upon the category for example it's e-commerce right as a business can be really built online and and obviously uh, i also understand that new age beauty companies like nike sugar cosmetics uh, man company all of these businesses can be really built online right or, or, or even the brands can be built online here right but there are uh, larger you know uh, you know where the trust is there in terms of banking ecosystem right or or a certain ecosystem they they may need an omni channel i still say that's a part of the digital strategy but rather than just having or looking at the digital it should be an overall an omni channel strategy where where everything is linked to digital right like whether it could be connected tv it could be digital out of home or it could be any part of the game right so so i believe that uh, you know all of this is here to stay and it it will go increasing but it will evolve into an omni channel which which could you know be a part of the digital strategy in itself uh, and and we have seen large part of the businesses uh, rupam in fact you could be a great advocate of that that 
a lot of things from out of home is now moving to programmatic digital out of home, right? And and a lot of television people are talking about efficacy by doing, uh, you know, through OTT, which is which is through uh, connected TV. So I think there are a lot of things which are which are evolving, right? So um, so one of the example which I can I can because we, we are talk and we are in the BFSI panel right now, I, I can clearly see that. Uh, one of the thing which I saw, which was really built well, uh, especially with coming Yahoo as one of the platform was research and ranking, right? So I, uh, I, I just re recollected this while Prasad was talking about um, the discount broker, which could be Zerodar, right? So, so this companies, where a lot of people do not have the understanding, right, of what equity they need to buy or they need to sell. And, and uh, you know, at what time entry has to be there, what time exit has. So this company kind of come up with an, a knowledge and education bank with a lot of researchers and, and they tried to sell that, right? And they created an amazing UI, uh, you know, a clear cut part, you know, in terms of subscription model, monthly subscription model, they'll get X amount of things. And that really worked well for them. And, and we have seen success in, especially in the Yahoo with that campaign. So uh, it, it really transforms, right? Because there are a lot of people who wants to trade uh, the brokers are available online, but they still don't know what to buy. They don't trust the people who are saying, okay, buy this, right? Maybe they want to understand why this, right? And that's why their people are now looking at the subscription model and, and fine to pay, which was not earlier the case. So yeah, there are a lot of digital brands and businesses which could be built online uh, completely with the omni-channel help. Um, coming to what are the key success story, right? With, with, we, we all would accept in a certain way that with digital only, right? Uh, the buying has become, or pro probably the acquisition of a customer has become really easy, right? Unlike before. Uh, and, and, and the key lessons which is learned that you need to find out what is the problem, right? Uh, the real problem, which we are, we are trying to solve for the consumer. Second could be, you know, uh, we can easily track where these consumers are coming from. The key or the global mantra would be the right attribution, right? I think that is where a lot of marketers find a challenge. Should we give a last click attribution? Should we give a unified? So I think attributing it to the right piece is going to be the key in time to come. And if these lessons are learned right by a lot of traditional companies or, or the key marketers, I think this will evolve over a period of time and, and get us to the next phase. As somebody did mention about the post-digital era kind of kind of thing. So this is what I can sum up. Great, great, Vishal. Thank you. Thank you for your input. Now, just moving on. Uh, Sumesh, this question is will, will be for you. Uh, what can other business learn from digital only business? Sure. So I think, uh, Rupam, uh, a lot of things that can be learned from digital only business. Uh, some of the things uh, I think Vishal very nicely explained as well. Uh, the challenges that we have in, in the other business, I mean, the first and foremost, uh, or other advertising platforms, first and foremost, that who do I attribute it to? And this uh, business model clearly gives us, uh, in true sense, what performance marketing or performance advertising is. And hence, each and everything can be tracked, maybe uh, drop off uh, analysis that you do while people come on your website. Uh, typically, what, what we need to understand is that uh, days are gone when we used to con consider customer as uh, uh, or 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 make customer segmentation only based on age and uh, where they reside at i think uh, one of the important things that that people need to learn and the example that we've been talking about uh, zeroda or similar success stories that people need to understand that consumer now is not just based on the geography and the age uh, or certain parameters. We need to divide these consumers into product, uh, uh, product focused consumers, uh, price sensitive consumers. There are certain who are browsers. There are certain customers who uh, really want to kind of do research and they're here only for research. They might go to any other channel and buy from you. And likewise, we need to segment these customers in a manner which you even do in your traditional or other channels as well. And the second most important point is, like uh, Prasad said, like Vishal said, that most of these successful digital businesses have been able to solve a customer problem. They could identify the customer problem. They could resolve the customer problem. It could be trust. It could be reach. It could be, Sandeep said, convenience, that I, I can conveniently order things sitting at my home. And the problem statement was people were saying, what do I do if I need to return it? When I go to a shop, I try 10 
things and I then choose what I need to wear. They said fine, we'll do free deliveries at the same point in time, we'll take it back if you don't need it. That's a very small problem statement that they tried uh, solving and hence a lot more customers started coming to these platforms. Swiggy for that matter. I mean, COVID was an opportunity for them and they started in Insta deliveries. Right. Most of us are now using Instamart for those deliveries and their their uh, subscription rate has gone up. Now, these are certain things that we need to learn. We need to be agile. We need to consider consumer pains and solve it in a manner that becomes absolutely simple, absolutely flawless from a customer perspective. Having said that, it's not only onboarding that needs to be looked at and all the processes that are involved in a customer journey also needs to be looked at. From an insurance perspective, we also need to look at how we can digitize and we've done so many things around that, that how can we digitize our claims? I mean, most of our claims today are based on our AI, uh, where we do all of these claims, right? This is nothing but making the customer journey simple, simple right? So we, we need to solve all these problems in a, in a way, and this is what somebody or other business needs to learn from us. And, uh, like I said, this customer is changing. Customer changes every now and then. And the expectation of this customer is changing. So all the businesses, whether digital, not digital, they need to change with the customer. So, uh, so much great thoughts, actually. I think digital business thought about the speed with which we need to respond to uh, evolving consumer. And of course, the consumer is evolving at a speed which is uh, like everybody's trying to just keep up and catch up to it. Sandeep, any thoughts from you on this? Yeah, sure. So you spoke about, both of you spoke about the speed and the evolution. Uh, I think the biggest lesson that all of us can draw from the success of digital-only businesses is the segment of one. You know, that's how I say it. Uh, you, you know, uh, we, we just heard about micro-segmentation. I would say it has gone to segment of one. Now, segment of one is me as an investor or me as a consumer. Uh, you know, and specifically me and the segment of one. Uh, what are some of those aspects, right? The first one is, uh, you know, obviously uh, the content that I need, um, you know, um, the, the great example of uh, Zero Dower, you know, uh, uh, Grow and, you know, some of those platforms is so much of content is in there that you could actually study if you wish to and uh, you know, really be a good investor before you start investing. Right. So you gave me the content that I was looking for. Sometimes you could also, uh, you know, give me personalized content if you have enough information about me. So the personalization, uh, you know, from that perspective. The second one is the UI UX, uh, you know, aspect, right? So this is a huge change. You know, if I really, as I come from mutual fund industry, if I see the uh, way we were, uh, you know, before the advent of, uh, you know, this whole digitization and today what we are is a sea change. And, you know, some of these digital only players have such better UI UX and I'm saying it openly on a forum uh, that it is, you know, worth learning a lot from, uh, you know, because they understand uh, because the interface is only digital, right? For them, there is no physical interface. So obviously they put all of their energies onto making that interface better. And that's something that we can all learn, uh, you know, to be better. Uh, the third one is the delivery uh, personalization or the segment of one delivery. Uh, you know, most of these uh, new age delivery, last mile delivery uh, network can give you actually tracking on your mobile phone as to where is your server, how far away is your she, what is the expected time of delivery, um, you know, and the details of that. And you could, you know, rate each and every transaction, which I think gives a lot of control to me, a lot of confidence to me. Um, I remember when Ola's and Uber's happened, you know, quite a lot of my female colleagues uh, said that the biggest advantage is I know who's going to be picking me up and, you know, my parents or my, my husband can track where that vehicle is, uh, you know, so I believe that that's a huge, huge advantage and we can all can, can learn, you know, from that as well. Uh, the next one uh, is control, you know, somebody mentioned that word, it's a very, very beautiful word, you're giving control into the hands of uh, your customer. Uh, you know, he or she can choose, he can choose the amount, he can choose the time, right? So it doesn't have to come to you when your office is open, they can transact whenever they want, they can return the goods, uh, if they don't like, they can ask you questions and so on and so forth. Every uh, query or complaint can be tracked personally and stuff like that. And the flexibility, um, which is again, a great lesson that, uh, you know, we all can learn, you know, from, from, the, from the digital only, they can, they can give it to you the way you want, they can classify it the way you want. 
uh, you know there are some etfs that allow you to choose the stocks that you want in your etf right uh, which which is really something that we all can can learn so those are the the hard lessons and there are two strong enablers that we can learn right one is the use of data my goodness the way the data gets used the way data gets generated about you know your persona your purchase habits the way it is curated the way it is augmented getting it from first party second party third party you know uh, higher order cdps outstanding i mean you get a clear picture of who are you talking to you can customize your offers you could um, customize the product uh, and so on and so forth so use of data is i guess you know the strong enabler Uh, that we all uh, you know can uh, can learn and then uh, at the brand level we all of us are marketers essentially i think differentiation is also another thing that uh, you know i i kind of admire um, you know each of these uh, digital alternatives have positioned themselves very very well digit insurance for example said we are only digital um, you know and and you see the the whole communication the whole positioning every aspect of that positioning is very different um, you know in the me too world of bfsi i think those two enablers use of data and differentiation uh, stand uh, very tall for me apart from the segment of one you know which is a great uh, legacy that uh, you know these businesses have left behind for the rest of us thank you great sandeep sandeep actually i have a follow up question with you which actually will just take the conversation forward in terms of uh, what you were just talking about is is the, are there any specific digital strategies uh, different sectors may adopt to gain the most from these learnings so uh, i just said uh, you know segment of one now that's a that's a huge one that's a universal one everybody you know can do a segment of one i've seen automobile makers uh, you know utility leveraging that very effectively to do localized deliveries customization of the cars and so on and so forth uh, you know to something as uh, as uh, frequently used as a food um, you know uh, customized offers get sent if you like something they will tell you that this is what you are like so therefore here is the next suggestion you know that we have uh, and so on and so forth so i think uh, segment of one uh, is a huge huge lesson um, use of data i mentioned um, you know is uh, we all used to use data big data was in there but the way uh, you know it has been taken to a completely new level uh, you know by augmenting it by collaborating with others by um, you know tracking that by um doing uh, things like uh, forecasting and uh, uh, you know various machine learning models on that you know to to really predict uh, when is it that you're going to be ready for your next upgrade and so on and so forth are some of the uh, very, very clearly things that everybody you know can learn um and the second one uh, which is a derived uh, you know kind of a learning is differentiation right because the moment you respect your customer as a segment of one you got to be also thinking as to how can i be more meaningful uh, you know this uh, to to this customer and digital only you know have so much less of other contact and there's only physical screen contact right so therefore they have tried very very hard to differentiate themselves and i think all of us need to learn that um, you know to to be better in what we do so whatever i said was very very universal and i think all of us need to Oh, absolutely, Sandeep. The meaningful part, uh, which you uh, use as a phrase, I think it's very, very uh, critical because the brands need to be meaningful and differentiated to build brands to start. Uh, so Sorry, there is ready. one one more thing that just struck my mind, and I think yes. uh, the long term sustainability, um, you know, that is also pretty strong. Meaningfulness, or you know, what you stand yeah. for, um, yeah. and so on and so forth. The culture that the brand represents, I think those things are also becoming very, very relevant. Uh, right. which is a fallout of uh, digitization um, you can say yeah. it is it is because the way consumer has evolved in the fashion but i think it is also something to do with the advent of social media you know the the you know the kind of individualism as well as the, the long term thinking that everybody has gotten into in investing um, i mean uh, you know 55% of all the money invested in developed market last year uh, was invested behind sustainable um, uh, you know investment vehicles right so that has yes. become a very very strong trend that all of us need to be yeah because as amanda was talking about now these days consumers can actually figure out what is the supply chain from where you are getting it to everything and uh, these days consumers are becoming conscious of that yeah thank you sandeep on that so much to want to add to that actually please so i think uh, a lot of a lot of us have covered in bits and pieces i i think uh, larger thing that we need to understand is that uh, digital strategy uh, or digital plan helps you in scaling up 
at a much faster pace. Uh, the reach that it gives you uh, is enormous. I mean, today a, a, a seller sitting in one part of the uh, India could never think of distributing those products uh, in the remotest of the part of uh, our nation and that that's what uh, it does. So the scalability and the kind of expansion that we can think is something amazing that we need to understand. Uh, also, like I said, uh, attribution and attribution in terms of while you're onboarding a customer or attribution in terms of uh, even after onboarding, what are the kind of interactions that you are having? How can you make uh, life of the consumer simple? Even post sales experience of the customer needs to be looked at. So the customer experience before he or she is buying your product and the service and after he or she is buying your product and the service entirely needs to be looked at. There are certain aspects that we need to understand. Uh, it will evolve. I mean, the consumer will evolve. The ecosystem will evolve. I mean, there are so many things where we need to break the journeys. And specifically, when I talk about our sector, uh, while we would want to do everything, do it yourself from a consumer perspective. But there are certain things from a risk underwriting uh, perspective, uh, uh, removing the fraud, uh, fraudulent elements. There are certain things that need to be looked up. Uh, the ecosystem needs to be developed in such a manner. Industry, regulator, all of us need to work together on that. Uh, one of the most important things, Rupun, that I would like to add, uh, other than that we've been talking about, also is the product that we need to look at. Uh, what what we've realized over a period of time, and all the success stories that you need to look at. One, they have understood the customer. They've tried resolving the pain points from an onboarding and post sale service perspective. They also looked at product and how can we simplify these products? And that is very important uh, that we need to understand and that will help in uh, the overall uh, way how, how different sectors adopt to these digital specific strategies. Uh, I think largely these, these are the things uh, that I would like to uh, talk about. Uh, insurance as a specific sector, like I said, from an onboarding to the entire experience of the consumer needs to be looked at. I mean, uh, we have now crossed the uh, level where we call ourselves a digital insurer. Uh, now we need to call ourselves AI first company and that is where we need to work upon is, is what I uh, feel uh, about. Thank you, Vishal. Thank you. Prasad, what do you like to add to that? Yeah, so uh, Sandeep and Somesh has, uh, have already covered most of the points. But I'll just add one point into this um, uh, digital strategies across industries. Uh, every every uh, sector has taken a different approach to uh, digital business. If I talk about um, FMCG, uh, they are predominantly talking about uh, the digital strategy to get the reach. More and more reach they can get out of uh, uh, digital uh, platforms is what they are uh, looking forward to. And another side, uh, we have BFSI industry, which is predominantly more into getting the final conversions, uh, getting the leads. So uh, FMCG is currently more on the top of the funnel, whereas BFSI is more into the uh, bottom of the funnel, the programmatic, the performance laid, everything is where the BFSI is currently focusing on. I think what I believe uh, that in digital business, the brand plays uh, equal uh, role, if not more. So uh, what I believe that when we are talking about these digital strategies, uh, the BFSI industry should take a leaf out of FMCG industry or e-commerce industry and ensure that they are building that digital brand. They should adopt a digital strategy which is more about full funnel rather than always ru running behind the leads, the cost per lead and finally what kind of conversions they are getting. It, that approach has to be more about full funnel. Uh, uh, the approach has to be more about uh, building the awareness, creating the consideration, and then using the audiences creating through this awareness consideration link to generate the leads out of it. That's how I look at it, even from the insurance industry, the life insurance industry. I think that approach is going to be more beneficial than just running behind the people to uh, force them to start a journey, force them to uh, uh, get the quote, then run behind them to get them converted. I think it's all about giving that control flexibility to the consumers. 
ensure that they find value in dealing with you they find that easiness in dealing with you they find that value in dealing with you and they find or they get that confidence of doing everything on their own i think that's where i uh, look at it from the overall uh, digital uh, business strategy get the reach uh, and then uh, ensure that those customers get a easy processes to fulfill their requirements absolutely prasad i mean the convenience and the interaction of the consumer has to be uh, the best in class and uh, we've talked about the ui ux also how it's evolving and things are changing uh, vishal any thoughts from your side on this i think they have covered it all but but i love the way <laughs> prasad prasad summed it up right like i think right, uh, right. what was there on my mind when you asked that question to sandeep was yeah. full funnel approach which is the ida model what we call in the marketing terminology right is completely missing uh, somewhere in the digital strategy today right nobody looks digital as a full funnel approach they all most of them is looking at a large at a, you know the lower funnel of of conversion right and that is where one mm-hmm. of the biggest challenge as a publisher or as a uh, you know platform we need to we need to come up with a solution and and omni channel is one of the answer to that right uh, and the key key is the messaging right uh, on what frame uh, you are trying to acquire that consumer right is going to be very important and that's why i say ida model is is one of the thing which you know we need to focus from a branding to a conversion strategy we need to look at this at a full funnel approach with the omni channel strategy and right message to the right person which is relevancy in the measure i mean um, <clears throat> sandeep spoke about uh, meaningfulness right uh, personalization relevancy and scalability i think these are the overall uh, i can just sum it up on that that that's that's what we all mean to say absolutely so we shall one more follow up question with you uh, it's on the supply side uh, how do you think dsps need to evolve and what changes need to be brought about to actually build uh, on the digital front Uh, that's a very good question um, i i think it's already evolved to a level but it will be an always as our industry itself is an over always evolving industry but one of the key thing right is more or less a lot of dsps have started becoming an omni channel and we have we have been one of the leaders uh, globally that yahoo dsp is an omni channel right uh, so we are connected with connected tv right so we have samsung tv so you name it name the brand which will be boot mx player all of them is a part of the connected tv platform right now right including samsung and a lot of the smart tvs are coming up with their own connected tv channels whether we right. talk about digital out of home there are good amount of aggregators which includes lema adon mo uh, and moving walls there are a lot of companies who have already evolved to a to a programmatic digital out of home right now the biggest thing is to make marketers uh, engage and understand that the way they look at digital right rupam that is to change with the supply as well uh that that lot of education is now happening from our side to a uh, lot of people because digital when we talk it is largely about 101 but when we talk about connected tv or when we talk about digital out of home we talk in a multiplier of 4 or 5 because it's not the one to one screen what you are talking about so i think it is evolving and it will it will be an always evolving thing like audio right in a car programmatic audio so connected with spotify gana you name it and we are all connected with that So I think supply has evolved uh, already, and and it's far uh, far far ahead right now before the time comes for India, uh, because yeah, India is going to take a little bit of time and uh, overall uh, you know adoption of the omni channel. But but we are well prepared from a DSP side. Good good, Shall. Thank you. Uh, we have just about a minute left. Uh, Sandeep, sure. would you like to add to this question? the supply side of course is an important element of the whole yeah no i think uh, no, uh, yeah i think we shall cover most of it i am going to be talking about two uh, anti learnings or you know something that we all need to be mindful about right one is uh, and since we spoke a lot about the discount brokers and stuff like that uh, we as manufacturers have to do quite a lot of unlearning of some of these investors okay who came in without too much of a thinking um and lo- you know educate them about the right way of using the product right so be- you know because a uh, product like mutual fund which is a little difficult product to you know kind of use because it was democratized to such an extent uh, that anybody could invest whichever way and this is too more on the equity side and the kind of demat accounts got opened up everybody had a demat account and then most of them didn't know what to do with it um and as a result of which there were negative experiences so we uh, have to be very conscious about uh, you know g- helping our hand holding the the investors to unlearn some of the wrong things that they may have learned because you know not everything can be learned on your own sometimes you need an expert right. uh, so one aspect is that 
And second positive aspect of that is uh, we have to very quickly make changes to the products that uh, you know we uh, you know we kind of offer. Um, the great example here is passive investing. Uh, you know, in mutual funds, right? all mutual funds were active uh, for a for a very long time, and suddenly because of this democratization, people uh, you know started uh, taking a lot of interest in passive. As a result of which, all of us had to you know really quickly. Uh, repurpose our portfolio, launch some of the new products, um, you know, communicate aggressively on that side of it. So getting the product suit ready for the supply. So supply is in place, as Vishal said, uh, but the learning and learning of the investors and getting, uh, you know, making changes to your product mix and getting some of the uh, more relevant products ready uh, are some of the aspects on the supply side that we all have to be uh, very careful about. Great, great. Thank you, Sandeep uh, and Prasad, uh, Somesh, Vishal. Great uh, input from all of you. Uh, this uh, brings to an end to our uh, panel one discussion. Shobna, over to you. Thank, Thank you, you so much, uh, gentlemen, for conducting that very engaging session. I think you shared some of really great insights from your experiences in your digital journeys and exploration so far. Thank you very much uh, for that lovely session. Thank you, Rupam, for moderating it for all of us. Thank you.